Hey guys, what's up? I was going to go ahead and make this prelude to the video because simple as this, the traction control and stability track comes on with the light brake light on. Check your brake fluid. That's all it was. I was low on brake fluid. But I went and tried to put in the brake pedal switch. You can watch the video if you want to see how to put in the brake pedal switch. It shows you how to do it. And it's not that hard. But check your... It's not that hard, but check your uh, brake fluid first. I mean, it'll save you like $15, $20. All right, guys, here we go. Another fun day of owning a vehicle. It's my 2012 Chevy Silverado. As you can see here, uh, the brake light and the traction or traction control and stability track is off. Uh, pretty much what that is. Maybe you see, I'll turn it off and give it a few seconds here. Pretty much what that is it's the brake switch which is this part right here uh, uh, but pretty much this right here all this is is a brake switch and what has happened is the brake pedal uh, this switch is going out maybe it has the grease in it in the winter time it gets real stiff and it's hard for it to function correctly I've found that in like the, uh, what do you call those things? The actuators in the air conditioner, that grease that's in those and along with the actuators and window and stuff like that, that grease, a lot of the times what it'll do is it'll really make it hard for anything to work. Like you see them electric doors at the stores and things like that. They have that grease in them. When it gets winter time, that stuff starts to harden up and it makes it real hard for it to function properly. So this right here is the fix for this. And I'll show you, see, we'll start it up. And you'll see everything goes away. Well, now I hit the brake pedal. See it popped on? That's that brake pedal, just getting a sense of it. And that switch is going out. So I'm gonna show you how to replace that switch. Let me get it pulled back here into my uh, area. Right. What we're working with is that switch right there. And looks like it has one bolt on the back side of it you can see that head backer on the metal thing that looks like what i'm working with so let me get it figured out here i'm gonna get these off is this thing right here You pull it back towards you and then there's a little button you just push on it and pull out this is that switch that you pull back and then you can see that bolt right on the back side of it a little bitty one can't really get my camera in there. There it is. See it? That one bolt's all that's holding it in. And pretty much all this does is tell your pedal that you're pushing the brakes. And when this goes out, it pretty much says that your brakes are on all the time. So let me get it removed. Right, here's the old one. And it's a seven millimeter bolt that is way too long. I mean, uh, due to the fact that it only goes into the part that's yellow, 
and it's really hard to get to you can't get your hand in there or nothing so yeah it's too long now i'll put the other one in which is right here in the bag nice o'reilly's part and you just gotta line up that bolt hole and line up the shaft from the uh brake pedal let you see once i get it in just wanted to show you a little something here Get you one of them clamps to hold it up against. Because this is really a one handed kind of thing. I was laying on my back, had my feet up in the seat. Well, I couldn't really get my butt up in the seat because I'm too fat. But man. I was cussing and a bitching. And once you get it so far, it'll stay in one spot because the mount has a little plastic peg that goes into the metal. It holds it in one spot. So you get it where you need it. You just gotta make sure you get that plastic part on that brake pedal part. And then you get it where you need it. You put that little clamp on there to hold it up against there. And then you just tighten it up like this until it stops. Oh. See, look how long the screw is, Jesus. Really? Does it need to be that long? It's cold as hell out here. It's freezing outside, so. A plastic breaks really easily. Uh, oh. I don't like the way that looks, man. I think that bolt's too long. I think the bolt that came out of the factory one is too long because it's pushing that out. You see it? See that gap right there? It's pushing it fucking out, man. Let me take it off and we'll see. Okay, I thought this was gonna be another one of them fucked up kind of things where, you know, it would go in to where there'd be something on the back side of this or this screw was in under that. I guess before I took it out, I could have looked at the old one. Uh, but no, it's not pushing it out. It just kind of does that, I guess. That's kind of weird. I was freaking out. I was like, man, what the hell? But that one does it too, so it's all right. I just thought I was tearing it up. All right, I'll put it back in. My luck, I always have to double check stuff. All right, this is that look I was talking about. Um, I put it in and I thought I was breaking it, so I took it back off. And I put it back in again. Guess what? It's the wrong plug. That's why I'm not a mechanic. That's why I never wanted to be a mechanic. They make so many different changes and everything in these. It's just ridiculous. Um, let me pull it off again and show you the difference. All right, guys. Why can't or anything ever be simple? I mean, geez. All it is is a little switch. Take one bolt out, put it on, and hook it back up. But... This is the one they gave me. This is the original. You see how this one has the bumps inside of it? And this one has the things going off to the sides? Those are the stop for this one. 
these are the stop for that one so why they changed it i don't know this is just stupid this is just stupid all right guys got back from the parts store and this design right here is 2013 design so the parts store didn't send give me the wrong part they told me that I should bring in the VIN number for now on whenever I want to order something because even though this says 10-2012, that's a date of manufacturer, which is at the end of the year, they switched the part mid-year and it now looks like this, which is 2013 design. I went in there and said I needed 2012, which is 2012, brake light switch. This is what I needed, and they gave me the one for 2012, which is exactly what I asked for. But they have to order it, and it'll be here tomorrow. So this project will sit and wait until tomorrow. Yay. All right, guys, here we go. This is the same thing, but it's a year newer. This is a 2013, even though I have a 2012. Sometimes when you work on vehicles, they change parts mid-year. And then, if you don't know about that, let's see. I should have checked them in the first place, made sure the ends were the same. But when you go to the parts store, you tell them you need something for a certain year, you just think, oh, well, hey, you know, they'll give me what I need and we'll be good. So now time to put it in. Yay. All right. There's a new one. Yay, the plug fit. Always check your parts before you go through all the work of putting them on. Luckily, this was an easy fix. Let's see if the light goes away. Alright guys, after further research, it might just be this, to where I don't have enough brake fluid, so let's put brake fluid in it. Just enough. See the research I've done on this problem. It could be your throttle position sensor, your brake switch, your uh, speed sensors. It could be a lot of different things. That's what's such a pain in the butt about being a mechanic. Hardly ever do you know. Push the brake. So if the stability track and the track
traction control goes quits comes on and quits working check your brake fluid before you change the brake pedal but I installed it so I'm gonna leave it on there I'm sure they don't like it when you buy stuff go put it on your vehicle and then go return it it's a big waste of time but yeah that's all it was was brake fluid I needed brake fluid I'm pretty sure the reason that the brake fluid goes down is because of this back tire over here. Ugh. Oh yeah. You even say it. So I gotta figure out why it's leaking. Maybe it's not tight enough or something. But check your brake fluid. That might be the problem. That's all I got to say about that. I'm gonna figure out what's wrong with that. I'll let you know here in a few. All right, guys. Sorry. Yep. That's all it was. Was a loose bleeder valve back here. I seen it wet back here a while back. So I kind of thought something was up. But goes to show once you see something's a problem, you might as well look into it before it becomes a bigger problem. Luckily, it's not a super huge problem because I just tightened it. I tightened them both. Both of them were a little tight, and I'm going to dry it off real good. And I'll look at it every once in a while, make sure that it's dry. Let's get all that crap away. I think it's on that. Okay, so now. So now, what they're going to do is um, it takes a while to. Oh, it's looking pretty good. So, yeah, luckily that part was only like 15, 15 bucks or so. So, not too bad. You know, when you look things up online and see seven different scenarios of what, what it could be. No. See seven different scenarios of what the problem can be. And three of them scenarios don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Two of them scenarios, they very well could be it. And the other two, they don't show you enough information to fix it. So... It's a pain in the ass to find shit out anymore. I guess I'll check these uh, lift block bolts while I'm down here. Might as well. But other than that, I think that's all it is. Just a little brake leak. That's happened before. But, all right. Like, subscribe, and share. I'll show you all my fuck ups.